message or this blog is going to be God or godliness. What are you seeking? God or godliness. What are you seeking? And uh, just to start with, let's go to Galatians chapter 5. And uh, in Galatians 5, we'll look at verse uh, 20, starting in verse 22. Every Christian is familiar with this. Uh, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, weakness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And so we see two things there. We see, we see God in, in terms of the Holy Spirit, and we see Godliness in terms of fruit that comes out of Him. <coughs> fruit of the Spirit. See, it doesn't say the fruit of the Christian. It doesn't say the fruit of following Jesus or, or any of those things. It's the fruit of the Spirit. And um, so so there's a division there. There's a division, there's a difference between God there and what God produces. In this case, the Spirit um, and what He produces. <coughs> But, this, but the verse goes on because we're, a lot of times we are seeking to be godly. We're seeking to be a certain Christian way. We're seeking certain attributes. We're seeking certain virtues. We're seeking uh, things to be built into us. We, we can call it character traits. But see, these are not character traits here. These are the fruit of the Spirit. <clears throat> they, they may come out of us as character traits, but really it's, it's God at work in us. It's, it's, you know, it's not us, and it's not meant to be us. And the proof of that is the very next verse, which most people who know the scripture on the fruit of the Spirit don't know the next verse, verse 24. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. And so there is the, <clears throat> there's the cross, always the cross. Always, if, if there's going to be these these things, these attributes, they come by God Himself. They come by the Spirit. Or they come by the life of Christ. Uh, and before that can happen, there has to be a death, and that death is us. We were crucified with Christ, and so they that are Christ have crucified. So He starts talking about our and the word lust. There um, is your normal word actually in the Greek for desires. It is dying to all of the desires that we have, and, and I know that would be, you know, we would go, well, of course, that's talking about all the bad things. That's talking about anything that is not coming forth as a result of union with God in Christ. And so the, the cross is the thing that has brought about that, that union, that oneness. The cross brought oneness. Jesus didn't just become one with us magically somehow. He became one with us at the cross, and in resurrection, therefore, we were one with him. Uh, and the scriptures declare that in Ephesians chapter 2. So, um, so to know him at the cross is to know oneness. Okay, but see, you have to be careful with the way that, that things are said, because if we're not careful, we'll seek to know oneness at the instead of to know Jesus Christ and him crucified and therefore know us because we're one with him. One is seeking him, God, and the other one is seeking godliness, trying to trying to work oneness, trying to get hold of oneness. Oneness is already done. It's already settled. Jesus did that. What we need to do is get hold of him. And that's that's why our desires and our heart is after Jesus instead of after Christianity. <clears throat> I mean, I, I always freak people out with the way I talk, but you know, I have no particular allegiance to Christianity. My, my allegiance is to Christ. My allegiance is to Jesus. I love Jesus, and I follow Jesus because I love him. And, I, and my heart, my heart is in this. You, you can, just like the Pharisees, I mean, they were, they shouldn't have been following God, Jehovah God, but they were following the system. They were following the rules. They were following 
trying to become something in and of themselves. And uh, uh, to, to understand the gospel is to understand that we're not going to figure this stuff out in ourselves at all. That's why there must be a debt. That's why the cross must be applied to us. And then with that, we don't seek the work of God. We don't seek the work of Jesus at the cross. Because to seek that is to seek something other than him. So we're seeking oneness instead of seeking him. But when you find him, you see that he's made you one, you find yourself, or you find one. Uh, you could say, as you look at his body hanging on that cross, you're seeking him, but one day you realize, oh my God, I'm crucified with Christ also. But you found that by seeking him, and by seeing who he is, and who he is at, this, at the cross, and is a lamb, and, and who he is is now one with us, and better said, that we're one with him. Um, to know, so to seek anything for myself apart from him is ridiculous because the part that I would probably be seeking was put to death at the cross, and the part that I need to discover is right there himself. It is him. <clears throat> so, God or God, seeking God or God is, um, so, uh, if you have your Bible, I want to just look at uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, if you, if you go there. Um, if I sound a little more official today, I'm sitting here in the room that I've spent the last huge amount of years of my life behind the pulpit preaching. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, it doesn't feel like I'm in a little room, you know, doing a blog. It feels like I'm doing the same thing I've done day in and day out for, for most of my life. <clears throat> Second Peter, chapter 1, and verse, um, well, let's read uh, verse 2 through 9. But before we read it, <clears throat> I have a request. Uh, close your eyes. No, 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 close your eyes. My request is that as we read this, um, try to separate it out. It's not just one thought. It is built. It is an incredible building because Peter has even discovered. This was written by Peter. Peter has even discovered that this leads to this, which leads to this. And, but we always just take one, we just look at one thing and we make it all one and we don't really understand the full picture. So we're going to read this and we're going to try to try to dissect it and walk through the word instead of just read the word. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord according as his divine power have given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your, birth and your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity or love. For if these things be in you and abound, they may be you, that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his own sins. I'm not, I, I hope somebody here is keeping track of time because I am not. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> 
All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this in a different version. And uh, I'm going to do that just so that we can shake up some things within you. <clears throat> Grace and peace to, to you many times over as you deepen in your experience with God and Jesus our Master. Everything that goes into a life of pleasing God has been miraculously given to us by getting to know and personally and intimately the one who invited us to God. The best invitation we ever received. We were also given absolutely terrific promises to pass on to you. Your tickets to participation in the life of God after you turned your back on the world corrupted by lust. So don't lose a minute on, uh, in building on what you've been given. Complementing your basic faith with good character, spiritual understanding, alert discipline, passion and patience, reverent wonder, warm friendliness, and generous love, each dimension fitting into the developing of the other. With these qualities active and growing in your lives, no grass will grow on your feet, no day will pass without its reward as you mature in your experience of our Master Jesus. Without these qualities, you can't see what's right before you, oblivious that your old sinful life has been wiped off the books. <clears throat> All right. So, grace and peace to verse 2. And we want this. So, here we go. Attributes, uh, godliness, or God. So, we want grace and peace. Um, and uh, we read this scripture and we see the grace and peace only comes to us as we know Him. And, and see, we have to add to it all the things we've learned. We, as we know Him, divine, that we've been made branches and we're put into him. And we're not learning about grace and peace. It's multiplied as we know him. That verse 2 says that. <clears throat> and then, um, so my translation is, grace and peace is only multiplied to you by knowing oneness with Jesus. This knowledge opens the door. <clears throat> um, verse 3 uh, talks about his divine power. His, not our power. His divine power. His power, not our power, has granted us what in verse 3? Everything. Everything that pertains to Cadillacs, big house, no. Everything that pertains to life and godliness. Oh, isn't that what we're talking about here? Uh, what are you seeking? God or godliness? Well, God is life, and when you have life, that will produce godliness. It's, godliness is a result of life, and he's given by his divine power that, and he goes on to explain how. Um, <clears throat> but how does it come? By knowing the one we are joined to. By knowing and by knowing the call. It talks about a call here. Uh, what is the call? Call to his life and to his godliness. That's what we're called to. We're called to both of those, but we only seek one and let that produce the other. We seek Jesus. We seek life. We seek him. We want him. Our heart cries out for him. See, if you're seeking for godliness, you're probably seeking with your head. If you're seeking Jesus, you're probably seeking with your heart. Because there's something in you driving you to him, and the other is you're doing your duty, trying to grow in Bible knowledge or something. So there's so let's just say it like this: there's no godliness without God. And if there is a such a thing as godliness apart from God, then we're thinking that's for sure not the right thing. All right, and then it talks about <clears throat> this comes about by his glory, his virtue. So my translation of that verse is, not personal consecration, but divine power has granted everything. That everything that pertains to life and godliness by means of us knowing that he has called us to gain them by means of entering into his glory and virtue and not our own. So basically just disarming us of seeking anything of our own, but to seek him and let him manifest through us as his body. Uh, so, verse uh, 4, 
Whereby we are given unto whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these we might be partakers of the divine nation, nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Okay, so um, by him offering us these things, where are we going? By him offering us these things through oneness with him we gain the promises. By him offering these things, because he knows we're one with him, we gain the promises. But then it says, but it includes faith there, but by believing what God has promised, we gain the divine nature. Anybody see a progression here? Oh my God. It's, at first we have to know, verse two, and we have to know our oneness with him, and then, we're beginning to know the divine promises by faith, and then by faith we're beginning to uh, understand that we have the divine nature, and then by gaining the divine nature, we gain victory over this corrupt world. It's just, just I rest my case. No, I'm going to keep going. So my translation is, for by offering these by means of union into his life, he grants us to gain all the promises he's ever offered so that by belief in these things, we might move from mere faith in them into partaking of the divine nature, which is God's method for escaping the corruption that's in the world. Where's the part? Where's the believers? We should be rejoicing. There should be good stuff. Except Kelly said, no. So what? Don't even breathe. Right, verse 5. <clears throat> and besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. Verse 6. And to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness. Isn't it funny that godliness is cropped up after a long or a list of the other things? That's because godliness is something that is produced by having certain other things at work in us. And we'll, we'll get into that as I get into the final translation here. Um, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love, or charity. Oh, godliness, what is godliness? It's the attributes of the Lord, it is God. In us, God, believe us, God, in us. And what does that produce? Brotherly kindness. And it produces love. No, not human love, not that stupid attempt at caring. But it is, it produces something that is eternal. It is God. God is love. It is producing more of the way that He is. And it's being pointed toward others now. It's not about me gaining godly attributes. It's not about me at all. It's first about him, and then it's about his life in us toward others. And it's a process. And it's a divine process. It's a divine power that, that, that brings about a divine nature, that brings about a divine manifestation, though we didn't say divine here, you know, that. All right. <clears throat> And then, um, uh, and then verse 7. For if these things be in you, it's not just talking about the things, it's talking about the process. But if, if these things be in you and abound, but it is talking about uh, the temperance and faith and, and, and patience and godliness and self-control um, at work by the divine nature. For if these things be in you and abound, and they're abounding, they, they, make that, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'll get my translation here. Just a, just a second. And then the last verse, now I'm just going to, I'm going to get close to the end here, but um, the last verse says, but he that lacketh, so the verse we just read in verse 8, says that this is working in you, 
you are going to be a bountiful field. You are going to have so much seed. You're going to have so much fruit. You'll never be barren. You got it all working in you. And it's Christ. <clears throat> but then verse 9 said, okay, but if you lack this stuff, if you lack, so you, and he's saying manifestation does matter. Not, not early on, but, but eventually manifestation matters. And you can tell things. You'll know about the fruit. You'll know about the manifestation. But he that lack of these things is, see, he's not evil. He that lack of these things is not um, a backslid. Uh, he that lack of these things because of the nature of the way these things have come about. He that lack of these things is not evil or backslidden or all the things we would say. He's blind. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see a far off meaning, can see, cannot see the, a bigger picture. He just sees basically to the end of his nose and had forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. All right, so I'm just going to go over my, my translation of this. And when I say my translation, uh, I sat upstairs this morning and I wrote this and I didn't. I didn't feel like the Spirit came on me and said, you are now a scribe for the kingdom of God, and therefore your translation should be better than all. Not even close. Uh, but I think it helps us to at least be open to what these scriptures are trying to say. Uh, I've done I've other translations, and I felt like some of those were, I just didn't have the time. I just keep this real quick for this vlog, so hopefully it'll bless you. Um, this is uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, beginning of verse 2. Grace and peace is only multiplied to you by knowing oneness with Jesus. This knowledge opens the door. And it, the knowledge is not oneness, but the knowledge is Jesus and knowing ourselves in oneness. The knowledge will always be coming. All it has to be. Verse 3, not personal consecration, but divine power has grown. So it's important, not personal, not seeking godliness, not personal consecration, but uh, not personal consecration, but divine power has granted everything that pertains to first life and then life producing godliness by means of us knowing that he has called us to gain them by means of entering into his glory and virtue, and not our own, not personal virtue, not becoming something in ourselves. <clears throat> Verse 4, for by offering us these, these by means of union into his life, he grants us to gain all the promises he's ever offered. Offering this union into life, he grants us to gain all the promises he has ever offered so that by belief in these things we might move from mere faith into partaking of the divine nature, which is God's method for escaping the corruption that is in this world. So there is there is that building. Verse 4 is a really beautiful, really well laid out, well spoken by the by the Holy Spirit through Peter. Of this process of there is there is faith there is faith but faith is in him and in what he um, has done in relationship to us not just what he did on the cross what he did in relationship to bringing us into himself and therefore everything is explained by that um, and then verse five now based upon the, this reason. Uh, let us as branches gradually and in a practical manner gain the attributes that come from the divine nature. Because that's what it, in verse 5 it makes a shift. Now it's about that this is true in him and you're in him that is true in you because he's in you. So let's see it work out of you. You see the attributes. You see the attributes. He describes them. 
you see the attribute, but they're coming from here, and they're coming from the cross, and they're coming from that one that's there above. Um, so now, based upon this reasoning, let us as branches gradually and in a practical manner gain the attributes that come from the divine nature. Let our faith appropriate his virtue, and that, and that virtue be joined with clear knowledge, and let that knowledge add self-control, and let it work in us to increase patience, and let these rest in our source, him, through whom we gain godliness. This is, this is the next one in the line here. And as godliness, and when I wrote godliness, I wrote the word God, G-O-D, in capitals. Godliness. So I wouldn't forget something that it is God. <clears throat> and as godliness increases, so it produces attributes of brotherly kindness and love. As godliness, godliness increases. For if these things are at work in you, see if these things, if this, you start to see this thing, this stuff coming out of you, or someone is starting to see this stuff coming out of you, for if these things are at work in you and are prevalent, it means you clearly are not, nor will be, barren or fruitless in knowing the Lord by His nature. Because that's what it's talking about, knowing the Lord by His nature. This isn't deep doctrines. This isn't talking about doctrinal truths of the cross that happened. And then, you know, when we know all mysteries, this is talking very simply about Christ being worked in us by His nature. And then finally, but if these attributes are not active in someone, it is proof that they are blind and cannot see deeply into Christ and forgotten that the cross purged him from the sin nature and its fruit. Okay, let's pray. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We do long after you, Jesus. We long after you. There is that which is in us that is not satisfied. You are the only thing that satisfies, and yet we can't. We don't seem to have enough. We want more of you. We, we, we're going after you. Our heart is with you. And we ask that the Holy Spirit just help us not to explain 1 Peter 1, 2 through 9, but to work in us the realities and the life of Christ so that we fulfill those scriptures whether we understand the order of them or not. Our heart is not after godliness for ourselves. It's after God. Father, our heart is not after understanding sets of scripture. It is after knowing you by the Spirit through the Word. So open our hearts draws and let life produce all the other things that are mentioned in these verses. We love you. We love one another, brotherly kindness and love. We ask you to bless it all in Jesus.